the growth, particularly um, it, for large customers, seems to be strong. Give us some color on what you're seeing happening in your customer base. Yeah, well, thanks for, for having me, John. Obviously a big week for us here as we report our earnings and hit our, our lockup. A uh, quick reminder, you know, at Doximity, we build software to help doctors save time uh, to provide better care for their patients. So today, over 80% of all U.S. physicians are active members on our platform, and we power millions of digital interactions each day with them. Telehealth video calls, e-signatures, news on the latest treatments and therapies. And yeah, it was a really strong quarter for us. We had an 8% beat on the top line, and we raised 10% for the year, which only has four and a half months left. So we raised $30 million on our our top line from uh, 298 to 327 uh, at the midpoint of our range, uh, which we think is, is strong growth and we're doing it profitably, 41% EBITDA margin, and pleased that all nine of the analysts who cover us raise their price targets. Uh, doctors and medical professionals spend a lot of money, so that's an important audience for a lot of people who want to market to and get their brands in front of them. Uh, tell me about the ROI that you're seeing from that interaction. Yeah, yeah. So the way we work with our partners, which are the, the best brands of medicine, all of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies and the top hospitals, uh, we work with them on these year-long programs where we work on getting them more patient referrals for a particular surgery center or that type of thing. And the nice thing is there's third-party data out there from IQVIA and other companies that can then measure our ROI uh, completely independently. And we did uh, dozens of these studies last quarter, and we saw our median ROI went up to 17 to 1. So our average client return for every $1 they spent on marketing with us, they got $17 back in profit, which is really good for them. They traditionally look for a two to three times return on their marketing investment. So they're, they're pretty happy with us. And that led us to have 173% net revenue retention rate or growth within our existing clients of 73% over the past 12 months. Uh, which we think shows that they're they're pleased with how we're doing and that our land and expand sales motion uh, is working. Yeah, Jeff, I'm curious as you look ahead to future growth next year, how much of your growth is going to be about adding new customers versus taking the customers who are already telehealth subscribers in and getting them to add on other services? And if you're concerned about any of that growth being hampered by the fact that people are going to be seeing more of their doctors in person post pandemic. Yeah, yeah, no, both good questions. Uh, I will say, as we look out to next year's growth, again, we see a decade-long shift here uh, to digital inside of pharma and healthcare more broadly. I mean, in 2020, they only spent 28% of their marketing budgets digitally, and that's when the Fortune 500 spent more than double that, 63%. So, you know, they could double their digital spend and still be a laggard relative to other industries. And as more and more doctors are closing their door to traditional sales reps, uh, you know, only 21% uh, only of oncologists now in the U.S. still see uh, reps, uh, traditional reps. We think that, that that shift to digital will accelerate. And again, we're going to be part of a decades-long secular shift in that direction. So we don't think well, we really even need to add new clients to continue to have this kind of high growth. But that said, we have had medical device companies and diagnostic companies, whole new markets come to us. It's still smaller as a percent of our revenue, but we signed our first seven-figure deal with a medical device company this past quarter. So we do see other, other vectors of growth. 